This is one of my absolute favorite features of Obsidian. Next to being able to connect one note with another, this might be the most powerful feature that I use on a near daily basis. So this is for you if you are a graphic designer, a visual person, if you are a copywriter, an article writer, a book writer, an author, uh, writing speeches, even if you are going to be presenting this week's sales numbers, this feature can help you out. And it is called Canvas. Now, the cool thing about it is that it's not even a third-party plugin anymore. This is not some extra functionality that you have to install something else to be able to use. This is baked right into the core functionality of Obsidian. And it's really neat because it's basically an infinite canvas that gives you all the space in the world to put stuff. What stuff? Anything that you want to include. Now, this is for me because I'm a visual thinker. Back in high school, I, I took debate class to learn to force myself to translate the pictures I see in my head into words I could use to explain to other people. And the ability to use words to describe things is really handy. But when you're a visual thinker like me, it can be really difficult to figure out how to do that. So this is a technique, this is an approach that I learned how to use in order to make the most persuasive arguments possible or to organize a logical outline or flow. This is how I've written multiple books. This is how I've designed courses. This is how I've written keynote speeches. This is how I've organized and written entire 70 minute mind reading shows to perform on stages. So if you have any kind of presentation, this will be very helpful to you. Now let's jump into the screen share so that I can show you how to get started and some of the features that I use on a daily basis to get the most out of this. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might recognize this vault. It's my YouTube demo vault. And I wanted to pick up right where I have left off to show you how simple this is to get going. And I want to make sure that we're up to date and using core plugins, we can search plugins for Canvas and some of the settings, they're very simple, very straightforward. You can make your Canvas uh, live in whatever folder you want to do. So how about we go back here and create one. And this is where all of our canvases are going to live. Now, one detail is that a canvas is not like a note, a simple markdown file. So if you are completely dedicated to only using markdown files and that's the only thing that you want to use, then canvas probably isn't for you. But if you want a built in way to organize your ideas, then this is perfect for you and the, the idea of not using Markdown doesn't bother you, then yeah, you're, you're all in. So we can go back to this and then say in the folder specified below, and hey, look at that, they're all going to live in the Canvas folder. And none of this really matters right now, so we'll close that. And the, the way that I do this is to use the Command Palette. So Command P for Palette, and then type in canvas, create new canvas. There we go. And we'll say use in this. All right, so this is uh, the canvas. And it's an infinite space. You can hold down space to get a hand, and then you can drag this space around anywhere that you want it to live. We'll close some of these sidebars to give us some more space. And you can zoom out and see how much space you have. You can zoom in. I'm currently using my MacBook laptop. So Command 
two fingers as though I'm scrolling is how I'm zooming out. Play with it, figure out. It's fairly intuitive on how to navigate through here. And over on the sidebar, um, again, direct access to the settings. You can zoom in, you can zoom out here, you can zoom to just what is on your canvas, undo, redo some of those elements here. But the way that I use it the most time is to double click and type in. All right, so I wanna know uh, who Canvas is for. So anybody, an author, might want to use this. Graphic designer might want to use this and uh, copywriter might want to use this. Now, an author makes sense. You can organize chapters, but a graphic designer might want to use this for writing proposals, writing grants, all sorts of different elements. And now you can see how the ideas are already taking shape here, but you can make it more direct. You can mouse over either on the side or on top or on bottom on each edge. You see these little dots pop up. And you can drag and connect these arrows to other cards. Now, this is an important detail in that the cards are not a note in your vault quite yet. They are only contained in the canvas. And you can write in here, you can do markdown, you can do all all the stuff that you're used to doing in a card, you can treat it just like a note, but it doesn't create new notes for every card that you add in. So it stays self-contained and allows you to organize things. As you can see, you can click and drag to select multiple cards, drag them around, and then maybe I want to connect them here or Maybe I want to connect this one and then this one goes to that one to kind of give myself a clue on which direction this flow should go. Or I don't like it that it's going down. So how about we go over here? So you can build your own visual language for what a card's position means to you. Do you like sideways flows? Do you like going down and then sideways? It's really up to you. You get to organize them however you like. And also, there are even bigger ways to organize this. So if you highlight all of the who is this for and you want to create a group, you can do that. And now I can drag this whole section because it's grouped together. And you can still drag cards inside each group. And if you drag it outside and then try to drag the group, well, this element is no longer inside the group, so it's not considered a part of that group. So you've got to make sure that it's inside for it to come along for the ride if, if you want to use it this way. Now, all of these that I just created are cards that are specific to the canvas. Just like you were putting a post-it note on the wall, cards are kind of similar. They, they just exist just as you need them, and then you can move them around. But what if you wanted to reference some other note in your vault? Well, you can do that. And that's what makes it so cool. So say that uh, we've got a data view example and this is it. Well, we can click and drag 
from the sidebar and now we've got that note is visible. And what's really neat is that the data view query, the database that's getting pulled in all that information is visible right here in your canvas. So you can double click and then go into the note to edit if you would like to, but it shows you the preview view in the note as it exists on your canvas. So this is where you can really turbocharge your, your canvas because you can drag in all sorts of different notes that link to each other and notes in your database. And even if uh, you had a video embedded in here, that video would show up. In fact, let's, let's do that. We'll make a new one and call it YouTube video example. And as you can see, it's a little difficult to read. So we'll just make that card bigger. Very simple. And then we can right click on this card and say convert to file. And we'll click that and say that's the title for it. Okay. And since I typed that in and made it the title, we don't need it because it's showing us the title here. So that would be a, a little redundant. So who cares? Now I'm going to hold down command and click on the title to open it up instead of navigating away from the canvas. It's right here. And then I will go to YouTube, grab a video and then drop it back in here. So through the, the magic of editing, I'll do that right now. I went to my catalog and I got the embed code for a video and then I'll paste it in here. And as you can see, here's all the, the hideous embed source code, hit enter, and then Obsidian automatically will embed it in your note, which is really cool. And then as we go back here, you can see that it, the preview of this note has already updated with the current contents of the note that I just updated right here. So it's always up to date. It's always current. And you can even see uh, inside each note what's there. So drag that around. You could even Let's play see. the video inside the preview here so it's really 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 handy in in terms of what you can do with this you can connect this guy to that guy this group you can connect to that note you can create any kind of connection and if you want to take this farther you can double click and then you can add descriptors or uh, notes or kind of footnotes to yourself about what this connection means in that arrow. And then if you click on this arrow, you can change the end. You can say that there's no pointy part. There's only one pointy part, or there are two pointy parts, one on each end, or you can change the color of the arrow if you would like, and you can edit the label there so they call it a label and voila you've you've got a whole lot of information on hand right away and really this is a great place to throw all of your ideas this is how you brainstorm and when you are writing something or you're creating something you add everything you can think about to a card and then you build associations and then you zoom out and then you can drag these groups into different relationships. So some of the different shapes you could have is the central idea or concept and then it's like a hub and spoke where each idea comes around and it all radiates out of this one idea or you could have the central idea 
and then start to drag and drop them into different relationships this way. So the shape that this can take is only limited by your imagination or the shape of the, the information that you're trying to organize. But this has been the way that I write everything is I put down as many ideas as I can and do that with cards or if I have notes about videos that I've watched before and I've taken notes about that in my vault, I can drag those in as reference and say, um, let's edit the label, so use that as reference. So now all of your references, your footnotes, the things that you're going to mention, the, the inspiration you have can all get put here on your canvas. And now this is your central hub and organization for everything that you could possibly want for this topic. And it doesn't have to all happen right now. In fact, when I'm writing an article or a book even, or doing a video like this, a lot of times I will leave a canvas open and then over the course of several days or even a week, I'll go, oh, right, I also want to talk about that and then add a new card and kind of plug it in where it needs to go so that it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. And I don't forget about details that, that, oh yeah, I should have talked about this one thing and watch, I'll still have something that I forgot, but hey, we'll put that in a new video. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you can do with functionality that's already built into Obsidian. And that's why I wanted to make this to show you what incredible things you can build with a tool that you probably already have on your laptop. So let's get out of here. And there you have it. That is a relatively quick walkthrough on Canvas and how it can help you organize your thoughts, ideas, and get the most out of your own personal database. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to hit me up directly or you can leave them in the comments below this video. And if you want to see more Obsidian oriented videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel or you can check out this video next. As always, remember, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.